Hello and welcome to episode 194. My name is Chris and later on, as soon as he finishes his dinner, we will be joined by Colin Byrne. We do this program every week on a Wednesday. We stream at 8 o'clock. You can watch it on YouTube Live if you're that committed. If not, that's fine because we're primarily a podcast and that's arguably the best place to get us, which you can do by searching around on iTunes or your podcast provider. We've been going for almost 200 episodes and we show no signs of stopping now. So thank you very much for tuning in this week to Heroes of Handheld. So this week's uh, not a whole deal of news, but I'm sure we'll be having some top banter when Colin gets here. Top banter. Uh, we're going to be talking later on about Stardew Valley. We're going to be talking about Don't Knock Twice, which is a new game coming to Switch. Uh, Son of Scorgasm coming to Vita and Professor Layton as well. But I wanted to start things off um, whilst we wait for Colin. Uh, I thought it makes the most sense to start off with a little review of a game which I have been playing fairly obsessively on my Switch, and that game is cool. Actually, I should give it a proper title. Oh, can't reach. Uh, that game is Pokken Tournament. Uh, I think it's called Pokken Tournament DX or Pokken Tournament or whatever. Anyway, Pokken for Switch. So I, um, I think I talked about it last week a little bit. I think I just maybe I just bought maybe I just bought it. I can't quite remember. But anyway, um I've been playing the game for a week now, so it's kind of a bit more fair to give reactions. So if you are maybe you're a PlayStation fan, you haven't come across Pokken or maybe you're just sort of um not it's not your normal type of thing. Pokken is a fighting game um from the makers of Tekken but featuring all Pokemon characters, originally from the arcades, and then it came to Wii U a couple of years ago, and then it's just come to Switch, uh, technically last month. And I had played it, I hadn't played it in the arcade, I had played the demo on Wii U, but the demo on Wii U, you couldn't do multiplayer, you could only do single player, so I didn't really play that much of it. And then the demo on Switch, I played about a couple of hours, and I was like, right, I need to get this game. And so so, so I bought it, so here we are. Um, the first thing to say is that I really, I really enjoyed this game. I've never really been a fan of technical fighters before. There's never been one that's kind of caught my attention. Um, you know, your, your Street Fighters, your Tekkens, uh, your, I guess, Mortal Kombat, all of that sort of vibe hasn't ever really um, floated my boat before. Just because I found them quite hard to hard to get to grips with, really, and like I found it quite tricky being in games that are so combo heavy and that's the reason i like smash so much is because there are combos in that game but they're fairly limited and if you get caught in one it's not the end of the world you can kind of affect your outcome a little bit more so i was sort of wary of pocket but i'm really enjoying it because again because there are combos obviously and there are characters which can kind of perform these crazy um crazy tricks and be able to sort of do all sorts of whizzy things but it's not i don't think it's as technical as a Tekken. Maybe someone who's played more Tekken than me can kind of correct me on that one. But I feel like it's a, a really good um, Tekken style game, but with a Pokemon sheen to it. The character range is really interesting as well. I thought it would be all kind of um, bipedal Pokemon. I thought it'd be, you know, things like obviously Machamps in there, uh, Pikachu, Lucario. I kind of thought they'd all be ones that were on two legs. Um, and did you know punching basically but there's a lot of really kind of interesting characters on there there's some four-legged ones for example uh there's some with wings there's some without any legs at all and there's a nice kind of variety to the um to the play that you get from the different characters they handle very very differently so someone like uh, machamp for example is very kind of you have to be really up close and you have to be really punchy and really on it whereas uh, characters for example, like Chandelure, uh, who's the Chandelier Pokemon from the latest generations, you uh, it can be a lot further away with, and it's a lot more kind of um, targeted towards projectile play. The game, the actual fighting is split into two phases. You have this kind of uh, 3D field phase, which is where you kind of, you're in, you're in an arena, but you're sort of running around a little bit and picking up pickups and kind of going for range moves. And then when you perform certain moves, the perspective shifts into a 2D fighter, so more similar to Tekken or something like that. And that's when you get the real kind of combo, battering people up against the wall stuff. 
I really enjoy it. I really like it. I think the uh, support Pokemon is nice. I think that you kind of have these special moves, and obviously you can call in other Pokemon to be your at your aid. The online play is really good. I, I mean, we've talked before about how my internet can be a little bit ropey when playing the Switch, and the Switch Wi-Fi in general isn't great. But I really enjoy the the Wi-Fi, and I have played a lot. And it's also so far the community that I've found online have been really good at kind of going for rematches and stuff. I thought it would be because I like most of the games I played online. I don't know if there's a ranking system, but m I think I'm on a kind of four to one win ratio online. And I thought that that's probably because it's other like other complete beginners and I'm just probably just lucky, but like I thought people might disconnect, but no people love like going toe to toe and doing a couple in a row and switching the characters up and stuff. Um, the single player is obviously, you know, fighting games always have a trouble with single player. I think it's okay. It's not incredible. I think it's fine for what it is. But the main meat is playing with your pals on the same screen, um, playing online. I've yet to try connecting Switch wirelessly to Switch, but I'm really excited to do it. My flatmates just bought the game. So hopefully we'll do that this, uh, maybe coming up to this weekend. Yeah, re I'm really enjoying it. It's better. I think I find it more approachable than the wii u version which i just found kind of um daunting i guess uh partly because the demo for the wii u version wasn't very good and didn't really show you very much but i just think it's maybe it's maybe it's different to me maybe it's different in my patients maybe it's the fact that you know there aren't as many um like we're quite hungry for switch titles maybe that's it as well but yeah i really like it and lots of kind of avatar customization stuff to get your teeth into Lot daily challenges are quite interesting so yeah i uh i'm enjoying pocken i would say on a scale of one to ten i would give it probably an, an eight maybe out of ten let's start doing the 3ds news then so the first thing and this emerged um l l early this week i believe but i might have got my dates slightly wrong there um and this is coming from nintendo wire but they're reporting it from a uh, e magazine and this is news that a professor Layton tv series is in the work so um level five uh have an expansion branch obviously called total licensing magazine um, and you can what you can read their magazines online um and that's what i'm doing now i am looking at the magazine and in the magazine you can see news that professor layton they are working on a tv show spin-off i mean it's not the greatest surprise um it certainly makes sense from a kind of marketing point of view people love professor layton and connect overseas and obviously like a tv show can really help boost the um popularity of a game you can read we'll put a link so you can read more about this online but it does look interesting uh, and obviously professor layton is very you know very popular amongst us amongst a certain audience um it's a really it feels really at home on um like it feels very much like a 3ds title as well even though it's kind of come to other things i think it's yeah, i think it's really out and i'm see what they, um i wonder whether they um go to like i don't know if it's going to go to netflix or how it's going to work um 26 episodes on track to deliver in 2018 so watch this space uh 20 so what's 26 episodes that kind of suggests they're going to be like 20 minutes each i my hope would be that it's a netflix um show but also you could definitely see it coming to like a uh, nick jr or uh, nickelodeon kind of kids um cartoons channel so watch this space obviously we'll be reporting uh, more on that and it will also be interesting to see if it's based on layton or if it's based on the most recent game which stars uh, lady layton whose name i've forgotten uh, because obviously people kind of know certain characters better than others so yeah we'll have to see what happens with that but do watch this space and that obviously we'll bring more news on that as it gets reported um harvest moon is a uh, a good a good old a good old jam people love harvest moon and in japan a tale of two towns is going to be getting a 3ds port this is exciting um it came out on the ds in 2010 and it's going to be called a tale of two towns plus it comes out uh on i think christmas eve it comes out to, on december 14th uh, for around 35 dollars and um you basically at the start of the game uh, you choose what sort of activities you like and then it kind of caters to you around that so you can do more of a focus on animal husbandry or you can do more of a focus on fishing that sort of thing uh, the controls are supposed to be improved and street pass support will come as well uh, we don't know if it's going to come out west but we'll we'll see what happens with that i mean 
I'd imagine it might, but there's Harvest Moon. Uh, there's obviously a lot of language and story in those games, so it's quite a lot to license and translate. But I mean, it doesn't seem unreasonable because there's been a lot of Harvest Moon games for 3DS, and they obviously sell very well. Let's do our last piece of 3DS news then. Uh, now this is this is a sad story, but I think it's also quite a sweet story. So on the scale of uh, of naught to sweet, I'd say it's a seven. I don't know what that means. But basically, we reported a couple of weeks ago that Miiverse is going to be shutting down. Um, this is the popular service which Nintendo users can use to submit drawings, text, cheats, all that good stuff onto this kind of... It's almost like a community um, wall, like a community Facebook, I guess. Uh, and we reported a couple of weeks ago that it's due to be shut down. However, Nintendo have launched one final Miiverse, and you can look. You can actually look at this online. We'll embed a um, we'll embed a link. You can read and flick through it. And basically, the idea of this Miiverse page is called Everybody's Message Community, and it's share your memories and thoughts about Miiverse and its users by posting hand drawn messages. And they're going to create a well selected post from this community may be used to create a giant collage at some point um, at a later date. So we'll see what happens from there. Uh, everyone's, it's like a communal thing, everyone's posting in their own languages, you can only hand post, you can only um, draw, you can't comment on people's posts. And it is really, it's full of people basically saying, I love, you know, I love Miiverse, this is, I'm sad to see this go, goodbye Miiverse. Um, just a couple of, a couple of highlights, uh, bye bye, see you soon, lots of Wii U users drawing and writing things, lots of really nice comments, you'll miss me Miiverse, you made me happy. I mean, we know Miiverse kind of had, um, an interesting audience to say the least that bad Miiverse post page on twitter was always very popular and our, you know you guys at home and our kind of audience really loved it but a lot of people obviously coming out i mean i've i've been scrolling now for ages and i'm only 20 minutes deep people are really posting deep on this uh, on this page they're really posting a lot of stuff and it's obviously you know it's a sad uh, it's sad to it go i think they're probably this is a nice move from them to kind of bring this thing together that lets people post on it and let people kind of have one last hurrah um some really nice drawings on it it is really sweet we'll see what happens next i mean obviously the switch it doesn't have the same kind of like it's got a touchscreen but they don't have that kind of pen and touchscreen angle that all the other consoles have had so you can see why it's not being brought across to it but it is still um still a bit of a sad one but yeah do look at that it's really sweet and if you like if you're like me and you kind of dabbled in Miiverse it will going on that will make you realize just how popular uh Miiverse was to a lot of people and how many people used it to do lots of drawings and sharing pictures and things like that so here's your big let's move on to the switch news i don't know where, don't where colin is well i do know where, I, like i know where colin is but i don't know why he's not here yet but that's by the by so Let's talk about Stardew Valley. Now, this we've been covering this game for a, a little while here because basically one of the high ups, um, the guy called Ty, uh, who's a CEO and designer at Chucklefish, has been really good on Twitter at sharing with the community what's going on with this game. He's been constantly posting like, this game is now with Nintendo for checking, or this game has been approved, or we are thinking of bringing Stardew Valley, Stardew Valley to Switch. And for those of you who haven't played it, um, it's interesting that we talked about Harvest Moon earlier. Stardew Valley is a kind of, from what I can gather, is a similar sort of farming sim game uh, with a focus on, you know, uh, husbandry and getting married and making farms and making money and stuff like that. And people go really deep on this game. I mean, I've got friends who play on Switch, on um, on Switch, on Steam, who are hundreds and hundreds of hours into this thing. They absolutely adore it, and it's you know, I think it appeals to uh, an itch that needs scratching, which is this kind of slightly mindless. Um, you know, you don't necessarily need to be one hundred percent focused. People play it whilst watching movies, playing TV. Uh, watching movies watching tv that sort of thing um and it's coming to switch finally i say finally they've not been keeping us waiting that long uh, it was announced a little while but it is coming to switch tomorrow october the 5th for the price of 14 dollars 99 um and they're saying it's going to be 10.99 if you buy in the uk so it's 10 pounds 99 this game is going to sell really well people are so keen for this and of all the kind of indie titles that are coming this seems to be like the really 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 popular one people are really keen for it it's like a real kind of hype around this community um i'm really keen i'm really interested and we'll see what happens uh, in terms of sales figures 
I'm really excited to play it. I'm hoping, oh, we did actually, well, I don't know if I should say it's on it. Yeah, I guess it's on it. We actually, are, I did ask them for a cope. I've not heard anything because I quite, I imagine they're quite busy because I asked them quite late. So we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, Study Rally out tomorrow in the US. Apparently it's on the eShop already in the UK. So by the time you're listening, have a little look on your Switch eShop and see if you can download it for the price of £10.99. Let's talk about the next EU Splatfest. Now, we've had a couple of great Splatfests. We had a cake or jelly. We had the iconic ketchup or mayo. Um, we had Flight versus Invisibility. Um, oh, I can't remember what last month's one was. Maybe that was Flight versus Invisibility. Uh, I'm going to look up last month's EU Splatfest. Let's have a look at this. Uh, last session is a weird one, blah, 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 blah. August, um, I can't remember. It was a September one, wasn't it? Uh, September, I'm just Googling September Splatfest. Watch this, the man Googles September. Oh, it was Flight or Invisibility last month. There we go. So they've announced the most recent, the next one, which is happening this weekend. Um, different time zones for different people, but it's happening Saturdays or Sunday for 24 hours. And I think this is their weirdest one yet. I also don't think we're going to see much uh, division here. To this is so stupid. What a great one. And it's toilet roll. And it's toilet roll should hang in the front or toilet roll should hang behind. Uh, this is obviously a you know a very popular conversation. People love getting into the weeds about this kind of stuff, which I kind of think is a bit, you know, it's not really my favorite argument to have, but I understand people enjoy it. Um, and yeah, this is going to be very interesting. I would expect that Toilet Roll in front will win. People love Toilet Roll in front. I don't know why, but maybe it's just that community is more vocal. Let's see what happens. So this starts in Europe this Saturday and runs through this Sunday. I'll be uh, I'll be online on Saturday afternoon playing if you want to play. Uh, we can definitely hook up together as long as you're going to be on my team, which is probably going to be team behind because I, I like to root for an underdog. I like to play for the for the little guys, and uh, I'm very keen for that. So EU Splatfest happening this, um, this what do I call it this weekend? And obviously, it is the perfect way to get your lovely seashells, which you can use uh, to trade with Murph. Is his name Murph? You can trade it with that hedgehog guy, whose name I can't remember, to get bonuses and to get equipment. Here's a nice thing that our lovely pals at the Elder Scrolls Twitter have done, which is I thought was really sweet. So we know Skyrim is coming to um, Switch on November 17th. Obviously, people are very excited for this one. And they've done a really sweet tweet, which is Skyrim in the style of the Super Nintendo Entertainment System box art. It looks really cool. I mean, I'm aware this is a podcast. There's not a whole lot I can do in terms of telling you about it. But what I will say is we're going to embed the tweet. You should really have a look at it because it's really cute. And like, I just, I really love seeing all this goodwill between uh, the Elder Scrolls, Bethesda team and Nintendo. I think it's really nice. That they're not just shoveling the game on. They're clearly like passionate about people being able to play on Switch. There's a lot of good reception to it. Oh, I'm so that this is happening. I'm so keen. So do have a look at that. And as a Elder Scrolls comes to November 17th. So, 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 so excited. Um, people love people love this game. People are just going to sell like hotcakes. Last bit of Switch news then. Uh, now, this is actually something that Colin put in. But because he's not here, talk is a horror game called Don't Knock Twice. Now, I've not heard about this game, but Colin just posted about it on our Google Docs. I'm going to have a little look now. It's coming out just in time for Halloween. It's a supernatural horror game coming to the eShop on 17th October, two weeks' time at £9.99 or $12.50. Uh, Don't Knock Twice is a first-person horror game based on a psychologically terrifying urban legend. To save her estranged daughter, a guilt-ridden mother must uncover the frightening truth behind the urban tale of a vengeful demonic witch. One knock to wake her from her bed, twice to raise her from the dead. Trying to save your daughter? You, I mean, it sounds great. You'll explore all the depths of a grand manor house, search for hidden clues and wield items to escape the terror that surrounds you. The game was developed alongside the horror film 2017 Don't Knock Twice, which starred Keiji Sakoff, who was good in Battlestar Galactica, and was directed by Carlock James of the Machine. Um, I've never heard of this game, but it does look... I mean, it looks interesting. The mo From what I can understand, the movie wasn't particularly uh, successful. If you look it up on... Um, if you just go do a Google search for Don't Knock Twice, you'll see that it's got a 5 out of 10 on IMDb, 28% uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, which obviously isn't, you know... 
isn't amazing but coming to switch is quite an interesting move um i've like i say i've never heard of it but i am quite interested to give it a play and you know if this is the first uh first spooky game on the switch it could be really well um because there isn't really a a super popular horror game on that at the moment so this will probably do quite well whilst people are waiting for something to play until we get resident evil revelations coming um yeah interested to play this fairly cheap price i like a spooky game for halloween as well and it does look spooky on the screen grabs is an old house and some kind of fire things and some someone's wielding an axe so that looks very very exciting don't twice comes to switch later on this month I've got a dilemma here, listening pals. I've got a real one because Colin still isn't here, so I don't know whether you want me to keep. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna touch his Vita news, okay? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that to him. I couldn't. I couldn't take my boy's Vita sound. It's like he's only got the Vita sandwich to eat. I can't snatch it from his hands. You know. I know he's hungry. That's okay. That's fine. So iPhone eight users. Uh, this is a little bit of news for the old iPhone. iPhone eight users may have been finding that during calls there was a crackling sound coming out of the speakers uh this was due to an upgrade from ios 11. apple however just released ios 11.0.2 which included a handful of bug fixes and including a fix to this bug uh so this looks like it had been an issue since iphone 8 on iphone 8 plus came out um and lots of people had had this problem uh initially it was believed to be a hardware issue it's come from techcrunch.com but now it looks like it's um actually an issue from a software deal so you can obviously get that on your iphone i did it the other night i thought it would be a really quick one um but it was actually really like i don't get with apple and i know i'm new to this ecosystem but like the updates take fucking forever and i didn't even have an iphone 8 so i don't know what it was doing and for some reason well for you know because enigmatic secrets of the pharaohs um they don't actually reveal the what do you call it um the change log at least if they do i couldn't find it but like i don't know it was a really long download um to get which I was kind of surprised by because it doesn't seem to have done much for me. But anyway, I'm still enjoying iOS 11. The control center stuff is really good. Um, I think they've done a lot of damage to the podcast app, but that's fine because I've got past that and I've downloaded Overcast. You can use Overcast to listen here as a handheld, of course. That's what I do every week when I listen back to the show. Um, yeah, I like the I like the new changes. I'm very keen for, like, say, new control center. Uh, I think that they've done some stuff to the camera, which seems to make it better. But I can't actually work out what. But it just seems to be a little, lot better. I also like how one of the things that I've not really seen people talking about, but what they have done is made the um, when you go in and you manage your storage space and you can control how much space apps take up, they've made that a lot more user friendly and you can do kind of cache clearing and things like that. So I'm very keen for it. Um, yeah, I'm keen for iOS 11. If, uh, if you're an iPhone 8 user, I would like to hear from you. Here is fanout at gmail.com. Do give me a message um, and we would love to hear from you. How are you finding iOS 11? Colin is not here, as you might have imagined. So what I'm going to do is I am going to talk to you a little bit about group chat. So group chat is our new feature here on Heroes of Handheld. You can uh, listen to it every week, and it's a one that is based on your content at home. We want to hear from you. And the, one of the things we should say is that we've um, we've got a list of group chat topics, but I would what I would really be keen for is if you want to suggest some or if you want to have a little pick of what you want us to cover and what you want people's uh, kind of opinions on, I can give that to you now. So some of the ideas that we've got coming up for uh, our group chat topics include uh, your favorite horse in a video game, uh, games that made you cry, which we're doing this week, uh, your biggest gaming regret. We're also talking about favorite mods player experience, what's the most satisfying shooter mechanic. Uh, we want to talk about where you'd have your dream Assassin's Creed game. We want to talk about your favorite sports game. We want to talk about your favorite party game. But we also want your suggestions to come in. So if you have any suggestions for an idea of a good group chat, do send them to us. Here is of handheld at gmail.com or at handheld podcast on the Twitter. It's very simple. It's very, very simple. Another bit of handheld gaming news, which I'm going to talk about right now, is a mobile game just, uh, just been announced, just been released. Stranger Things, the game. Now, I don't watch Stranger Things, but basically, uh, this was this has kind of been announced out of nowhere and released uh, today. 
and this is a cl kind of almost classic like 8-bit SNES NES style game. Uh, obviously, the second series comes out later on this month, and it's got all the main cast in it. But this is an 8-bit game for Android and iOS, uh, where you play as different characters from the program, and you move through familiar settings in uh, Hawkins, which is where the game is set. We will be, uh, I'll be downloading this, and I'll play it in time for next time we do a podcast. Um, and this looks like a, I mean, game. Yeah, if I'm honest, because I've not watched the series, I don't really understand what's going on in this game. Like people talk to me about Eleven. I don't know who Eleven is. Uh, people talk to me about Barbara. I don't know who Barbara is. But it looks like I would say it mostly looks like a game by color game. And I'm well for that. And it's free as well, which is quite a good, you know, a nice PR move from them to do that. I'm uh, yeah, I'm invested. And I will definitely be giving this a try. It looks really fun. So you can download it on the Play Store. You can download it on the um, iOS Store. We'll embed a link so you can watch a trailer. I don't know if Colin watches it, actually. I'll have to ask him if he uh, if he eventually gets here. So do, uh, do give it a little play. We'd love to hear from you what you think of the Stranger Things game. Colin is... Uh, on his way don't worry guys we got this we got this we're fine how are you yeah i'm good how are you oh i'm right yeah thanks for asking oh thanks for asking for you too i don't really all right let's get to the weeds on this oh am i too late to stranger things do you think i need to watch series one before i can start watching series two because everyone raves about it and i know it's coming out and i know people our end will like I know how obsessed people are with this program. I know it's really well loved. Like, uh, it, it was one of those ones that when it hit, everyone was, you know, really keen for. And it's kind of sparked this wave of like 80s nostalgia, especially we saw that with the It film that came out earlier this year as well. Am I too late? Have I missed the boat? Have I missed it? I want to know. I want to know from you, our handheld podcast. I'm definitely not just filling for time. But if I was filling for time, I would tell you that this week we have two bits of PlayStation Plus news and PlayStation Vita news, and Colin is going to give them to you as soon as he gets here. This week's group chat. Which games have made you cry? So we had a really good response on this from Nyla, um, who's a you know long-term fan of the show. We like Nyla a lot. He's a good egg. And he wrote in a really nice message. And I actually... Um, kind of agree with him on a lot of these games. So we wanted to know which games have made you cry. Nyla wrote it. Hi, uh, hi, Chris. Hi, Colin. Hey, Nyla. Just a quickie regarding this week's group chat about games that made us cry. I'm not afraid to admit that I cry when something moves me enough, and plenty of games have done this. Sadly, my memory ain't great, but more recent games I remember are Red Dead Redemption, which I've mentioned before, Horizon Zero Dawn, Gone Home, and Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. I also got a shiver and a little tear. Google just do not know how to make apps. The Google Hangout app is effing terrible. Terrible. Like I click, I I go onto the Google Drive on my phone. I click on the link, and it says you need to download the Hangouts app. I download it. They're all good. Click it. It puts me into a bloody Hangout with no one there. I, I don't get it. What was it trying to do? I was clicking your link. It said, "Do you want to join?" Yes. Oh, my my quiff is sagged because I'm so stressed. Look, look at it, sagging. It's not good. Nice of you to show up. Sorry, nice to sorry. Here. I'm. I had a meeting with Mr. Toby Carvery himself, the main man. Uh, uh, anyway, we, we were just do, uh, we were just doing um, group mm. chats this week. Because Ni Nyla wrote him. No, no way! You that far in? Yeah, you Colin, it's, it's half past. <laughs> Are we literally it's about to end? Half hour. Oh my god, that's bad, Soz. Have you done my news for me then? Uh, no, I, no, I knew you'd want to do your Vita news, so I left that purposefully. So PlayStation make. Plus has been revealed, guys. No, shut up, no, shut up, shut up, shut up. Hey, what? Let, let, oh, oh. Let, me fin let me finish group chat, because okay. then it's signed off, and then we can move on to the next thing, all right? right. Cool, okay, lay it on me. <sighs> Such a knob. <laughs> Missed you. I hope you're all right. Um, <laughs> so, me. by the way, Nyla signs off his email with, that's it, I need to go man up now. Mate. You don't need to man up. Own your feelings. Crying at video games is totally fine. I've cried at video games. Colin, you've cried at video games, I'm sure. You, you're a weeper, I know. I it's am. fine. It's fine to cry at a game. I've cried at a lot of games. A I've lot cried of at, games. I've cried at games that, like, it wasn't even because they were sad. It's just because they were, like, poignant. Mm, yeah. Um, you get overwhelmed with emotion. Yeah, I mean, the, some of the ones here, uh, Brothers A Tale of Two Sons, that is a, that is really true. There's a part of that game, uh, 
sort of about four, maybe four fifths of the way through that involves some swimming that just hit me really hard. Mm. Um, Red Dead is a, is a classic one. Uh, I cried. I won't. I won't be afraid to admit. I cried at the end of the most recent Uncharted game. I thought it was really beautiful. <laughs> Loser. Loser. Um, the one that I kind of. Well, I'm trying to think. What's the one that I? The one that hits me the most that I think about crying at is. Uh, uh, it's. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but there is a moment about mm, two thirds of the way in The Last of Us that involves my favorite animal that is the the most beautiful moment in video games and i cried a lot at that i thought that is such a sweet moment people um, really do they don't like the animals you know if the if the the pets the dogs the cats if they are affected people really you know get touched by that even more so than when a character that i like a human dies i find like if a, if yeah. a dog dies then and if you've got your own dog you're going to hold your dog a bit tighter and just be very sad. Do you think it's... I wonder if it's because, like... In I, game, I, I'm also innocent. In games, you, they didn't deserve to die. Yeah. And you kind of you kind of expect the human characters to die or to, like, sacrifice themselves for you. Yeah. Um, and also you sort of... Because you normally play as a human and the humans die so often, it doesn't have the same substance. But, yeah, when stuff happens involving animals... I mean, it's like the last of us one is slightly different. I won't spoil it, but you know, if there is a dog in a video game, chances are they're not going to make it out alive. Spoilers. Well, no, like there was that Call of Duty a couple of years ago that didn't do very well. Um, what was it with the dog? Ghost? That... Is it ghosts? Ghost. Yeah, that was it. And I remember I'd never played it, so I, I don't know what happens in the story. But I remember everyone in the when they revealed the trailer and they had they put emphasis on this companion dog that you're going to have through the whole game. Everyone in the comments was like, right, that dog's dead. Right, he's going to die. He's gone. Days are numbered. And to be fair, probably, probably true. Probably true. Because they know, like these game developers know that if dogs, if you've got a loyal companion like a dog, you don't really get cats, but a dog or a, any sort of animal, they're going to get in some form of harm's way because it's going to evoke emotion in the player. Well, they're going to they're going to like sacrifice as well. That's that's the other really poignant thing in games, isn't it? What, what have you ever cried at a game? Uh, I have. I, yeah, you know, trying to wrap my brains. I definitely have, and, and I think I've come up with the three games where. I felt the most emotion and shed some tears. The first one, and this is probably my first experience of um, a crying, was when I got a hat trick of Alan Shearer in Acura Soccer Free on the PS1. Oh, I'm oh, only joking. Unders Ooh. Understandable, because that is beautiful. Shearer with his trademark celebration. Uh, now, the first one was probably, or one of the first experiences, was uh, Modern Warfare uh, called COD 4. Uh, yeah, yeah, you love the end of that game. That is one of the best endings of a video game ever. Um, and that ending is earth shattering, in my opinion, just like the feeling of um, helplessness in those few seconds. But then it all turns on its head. No spoilers if you haven't played it. Um, but there's a scene where a fan favorite character who people have forgotten about now, um, unfortunately, meets his end for no fault on his own. He was just brutally murdered by the evil um antagonist in the game. And that honestly, it, I don't know if it made me cross. It made me like filled with emotion and even more determined to kill that guy you know i really, yeah. really wanted to hurt him you know and he wasn't the thing, real people not real characters the thing with modern warfare as well is that like there's so this there's, there's so much killing of kind of generic troops but when the, pe the there's people in spoilers for a 10 year old game there's people <laughs> when the moment in that game where the member of your team gets shot down and it's like just so it's so thoughtless you know what i mean like it's yeah. not even the guy doesn't even look he just fires the gun and shoots yeah he doesn't know that, what's happening that bit, yeah 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 oh my god, Sorry, god. That is really poignant. another one was i know i mentioned this a couple of weeks ago actually on um a group chat was the darkness now the ending of that game is really sad and it's it's, it's sad in a I don't know, it's sort of happy-ish, but no, it's really, really sad because the character, the main character, you've realized the wrongs you've done, you're trying to accept what you've done, and then you meet a certain character and they forgive you in the afterlife. It's it's so sad. That pulls at the heartstrings. If you're probably never gonna play the darkness, Chris, are you? So you might as well just YouTube darkness ending because it's no, so because, sad. Because I don't watch the endings of video game on YouTube. You should try I watched it. I watched the opening of The Last of Us on YouTube because I knew I was never gonna play it. And that's that's sad. 
The opening of the last episode. Oh, nah. I think, right, uh, that is my least favourite habit of yours. Like, I think you're such a great human being. Uh, I hate the fact that you watch so much, like, you don't even watch Let's Plays, you just watch the end of games on YouTube. It really winds me up. Well, the thing is, like, I back, I met back before I even played Mass Effect. You know there's a big hoo about the ending of Mass Effect 3? Well... I'd never played Mass Effect at this point. This is years ago, and uh, this is back when it first came out, the third one. I hadn't played any of them, and everyone's going, oh, the ending's awful. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to watch the ending of Mass Effect 3. And because I'd never played it, I had no idea what was going on. I was like, eh, I didn't get it. So, yeah, it didn't really have an effect on me. But then it sort of ruined it, because when I did get into Mass Effect... Of course it ruined, ruined it. it then. That's why you shouldn't do it. Which colour did you choose? Um, but no, the... Um, in Mass Effect, actually, the last one I could think of was Mass Effect 2, when a certain fan favourite, um, who I'd romanced and loved very dearly, decided to take... Um, oh, this is a spoiler, but it's been out for a long time. And you don't necessarily get this um, outcome if you've played the game differently. But a certain character decides to um, end it all themselves because they can't live with the decision that you've made. And that was brutal. That was so bad. Because when the character does this, you actually have a Paragon um, action where you can try and stop it, but it doesn't make any difference. Um, did I say her? I meant he or she. Whoopsie. And, um, and I was so... I've said this many times on the show, but when that bit happened, I was so angry. I turned my Xbox off. I just sat there and just turned it back on and played the whole mission again and chose the complete opposite option so that it didn't happen. Oh... Boy, that that made me tear. And when she said she loved me, that was also that was also very yeah. Nice. Ma- Mass Effect is a really teary one. Like, there's bits of me and Jack in that game that I've, you know. <sighs> Did you do the renegade romance where you just like bang her down in the like cargo? <laughs> Relentlessly pound. No, I did the sweet one. <laughs> and, and then and then, next... and then when and then when you like do it, like all she says to is f off. After that, you can't even talk to her anymore. It's like f off. Brilliant. Next. Anyway. Uh, not next week because uh, you're not doing it next week and I'm away um, I'm on holiday next week but the week after the group chat you've got two weeks to get in touch with this are you going to go to Club Tropicana are you going to get the drinks for free uh, no I'm going to Barcelona and I'm going to try and not get stabbed in a riot can you, can you try can you try and not be part of the revolution anyway that's another song right there uh, anyway. uh, no but I am actually going to Barcelona I can't remember if I told you on that are you going to, are you going to go on Monday uh when they're gonna they're gonna claim to be independent no i'm joking i shouldn't mention this move on the, t- the move timing on. of my holiday is perhaps not ideal at least everything will be cheaper <laughs> i'd imagine um I'll, oh don't worry you don't need to show me any pictures when you get back because i'll just be watching the news and i'll probably see you at some point <laughs> ah. it's like there like there's loads uh, of boys going on you're so... wearing your shorts to a cocktail <laughs> <laughs> so get in touch for two weeks time uh-huh. assassin's creed origins comes out at the end of this month it's set in ancient egypt we've had assassin's creed games in in london in renaissance italy in revolutionary paris um when, when was the first one the like without that like, yeah that was like was that Oh, it's 1400, um, 1400? Yeah, that was a long time ago. Can't remember where it was. I, I love that um, game. That's we've had great. American Revolution, Assassin's Creed. We've had all sorts. But now, again, there's so much again history. Now. Yeah, there's so much history you could do here. So, group chat, you get to you get to make your dream Assassin's Creed game and set it any when you like. Colin, this week or next week's group chat, where would you place your dream Assassin's Creed game? I've already had a little think about this. I would bet that there'll be at least three people who say uh, feudal Japan, mm, but we'll nice. wait and see. Nice. Um, oh, there was a pirate one as well, wasn't there? I forgot about that. Yeah, Black Flag, great game. Yeah, love it. So yeah, get in touch. Uh, any answers taken, even silly ones, at handheld podcast <laughs> or handheld at gmail.com. And let's round off this week's show with the PlayStation Vita news. Can I just firstly say that Battlefront 2 looks awesome. I actually can't wait to play that game. I think it looks so good. So good. So good. I like the first one. But honestly, they've got the they've got Darth Maul. Darth Maul with a double ender. I like a double ender. Yes. Nice. Anyway, um right, uh, uh yeah, Vita news. Got only got two bits of news to go f- uh, go through. Firstly, PlayStation Plus for October is here. So if you are a Vita owner, the two games that you'll be able to get for free is Hue. Now I'm just gonna, is this the color game that came out? Um, yeah. Look, Hue PS Vita. Because I remember talking about this before, but my mind 
is a wee bit hazy. Let's have a look. Um, so it's a, oh yeah, it's a really cool art style. This is like a puzzle. It reminds me of um, um, I guess a little bit like Limbo because everything is silhouetted. Um, but it looks like you're walking around like towns and villages that look similar to like something you find in Italy or um, Venice or places like that. It looks really cool. Just a uh, your puzzle game, and you know, it looks very nice. There's loads of colours and things. That's the big draw. Like it's it's silhouetted, but then there's parts of it that are in colour. And I think the whole point of it is, is, is you've got to find the colour because everything's in black and white, and you're like on the hunt for colour. Uh, but that looks cool. And now the other game, I had no idea what this one was, so I'm definitely going to have to. Uh, Google this. Sky Force Anniversary. I do not know what this is, so I'm going to Google uh, my main source. Oh, this looks really cool. Like a top-down, um, whatever that game's called. What's that game called where there's aliens and you've got to, like, strategically... Oh, um... um it's like that. Yeah, the, the one by the Detonation people. Yeah, yeah. I'll aliens, not, yeah. um... I'm going to look it up whilst you fill for time. Oh, what is that game called? Um, so, yeah, the anniversary for Vita looks really nice. And it's going to be free. And it looks lovely looking at the um, the art style on here. looks really, really cool. So, yeah, that, that's like a cool strategic game. So they're both going to be free on PlayStation Plus. And finally, just wanted to mention a really cool looking game that's uh, going to be coming up to Vita this month, I believe. I think they've revealed the release date for... Yeah, it's coming this October, so uh, any time now. Uh, it's a twin stick shooter called Son of Scorgasm. Now... It's been a long time coming, this, because this was initially scheduled for 2014, which is three years ago, people. Uh, it's by a chap called jo uh, Charlie's Games. Not Alienation! A uh, is that it? That's the game you were, that's the game you were maybe thinking eh, of. Maybe. That's all I was thinking of. Doesn't yeah, matter, move on. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, so uh, some of Scorgasm's coming out on October the 10th, which is in uh, just under a week, six days' time from when we're recording now. Uh, this has been announced by the creator, Charlie Knight. Uh, it's the sequel to 2011 Scorgasm, uh, which is going to be um, available... Uh, it's going to be available digitally on the store, um, both Europe and US at the same time, which is nice. Normally, there's a bit of a uh, difference between the release dates. So, a uh, bit of a blurb here for the game from the PlayStation blog. Uh, Son of Scorgasm is a twin-stick shooter, though not in the typical survival style. Instead, the game compri is comprised of a series of interlinked levels that you progress through in a non-linear style. What this means is that there are multiple paths through the game, ranging from fairly easy routes to some that are pretty hardcore. Uh, levels themselves are, des are designed to be different, and there's a real variety of enemies, traps, and bosses for you to overcome as you explore the game and find all the exits. So this sounds really cool. And it's got a great name as well. I mean, Son of Scorgasm. What a game. What a name. And I'm looking at the... Um, wow, this is a run-and-gun game in space. It looks pretty brutal. This is the sort of game I love. I love the games where you just have to hold down the trigger and just run around. Like that game that's out, um, came out this week, Cuphead. That everyone's talking about that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, it's mad trigger. for Cuphead, aren't they? It looks so good. I think the main draw is the art style for that game. It's, that, it's, it's like you're actually play, You're actually watching a 1940s like animation, but you're playing in it. It's so good. Amazing. Uh, so that's my Vita news for this week. Um, not much, but um, what can you do? Have you spoken about that um, horror game that's coming to Switch? That yeah, it looks really interesting, doesn't it? Creepy. I think the Switch is a great uh, little device for horror games. You know, like darkened room, handheld mode, get on it. Mm. Don't get many well, horror I was games. Well, as well, there isn't, um, there isn't really any horror games on Switch, so it's, it yeah. should. I imagine it'll sell quite well because people will, you know, pick it up. I mean, I imagine there'll be a glut of them now. It's Halloween. Yeah. But yeah, it looks interesting. I mean, yeah, I think this one coming out called like um, Layers of Hell or something like that looks quite interesting that as well. Nice. Layers of Hell. You couldn't get more scary sounding than that. Uh, layers of Hell. Uh, apparently, that means Inferno, Dante's Inferno. It's, it's to do with Dante's Inferno, isn't it? The the um the thing. But anyway, yeah. Well, Colin. Yes, Chris. Yes. Uh, you're going to enjoy listening back to this episode and watching as I feel for time. Uh, but honestly, I've just got here. Uh, Not my finest hour. I have to say, I have to say, like, if you're going to Toby Carvery, definitely have the uh, cauliflower cheese. Amazing. Absolutely um, incredible. Uh, what I want to know is what meat did you have? I go for all the meats. Ooh, baller! 
you, you can't well the thing is like there's quite a big queue and obviously when like the servers or the um the chefs are carving up the meat for you there's only one because there's not room for two because it's a very small area where they serve the meat and there's quite a big queue behind me and like i could see as soon as i said i want one of all the meats everyone was just like <sighs> all the uh, um like tutting and sighing like oh no um, i yeah. didn't realize like I mean, it makes a lot of sense, but I hadn't really realised that people go to Toby Carveries on a on a weekday. Now that's what we thought. We thought it'd be it's really busy. You know, it was really? it wasn't quite at all. I get the impression that a lot of people think if they can't be bothered to cook or they've got family round down or whatever, um, or they're working late, they probably think, you know what? What's it? What's an easy option? Let's go down to the local Toby Carvery and have a carvery because no one's going to go down there on a weekday. Mm. But no, honestly, it's so busy, so busy. But uh, it was good. Really enjoyed it. I'm sorry I'm late, but uh, oh, it's yeah. all right. That's life. Um, anyway, yeah. so I'll, I'll, pro I'll probably speak to you about Christmas time now. Um, <laughs> uh, that's if you survive next week. Oh. Anyway. Um, <sighs> yes, so your schedule's going to be a bit hectic for the next few weeks. Um, Chris is uh, away next week, so there won't be a podcast next week. We're going to take the week off because um, Chris is enjoying the sun. Uh, and the week after that, I am away um due to family yeah, where members are you? where are you what are you doing it is a um my partner's relative's graduation so i'm Ooh. we're going away for a few days so where, which uni fun. is it a good one it is a very nice one uh set in a lovely city um within the southern england area um, but not too near to the coast Near, near to your neck of the woods, where you're from. I'm saying either Winchester or Basingstoke. I'm going to say Winchester. Great, great. That's, that's brilliant. So if everyone wants to come, do you want the date and time as well? Please come. What's the live <laughs> oh, stream? Oh, over yourself. Everyone's going to head down. <laughs> no, no one's going to crash the graduation. <laughs> Can you imagine? Would you like crash the wedding? My busted. Um, yeah, it's Well, I crash the graduation. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, we're going away for a few days for that because, you know, it's early and... Uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm going to be away in a couple of weeks' time, but we should be back all guns blazing the week after, surely. Mm -hmm. Halloween week. Mm -hmm. Spooky. Yes, so um, no podcast next week. The week after, we will do one of our infamous Sarni episodes, and we'll fill it with turkey and all the other meats that are left over from Toby Carvery. That'd be delish. That'd be delish. But we'll be back all guns blazing on Halloween week, so that'll be very exciting. Very exciting. All the We're going to dress up as well for the occasion, I think. I think oh, wait. Well. We should. I think we should yeah, wear we some should. sort of fancy dress. I don't, do we usually do? I don't know what we usually do for Halloween. I can't actually remember. Well, yeah, I'm oh. not sure. Yeah, weird. Anyway, uh, let's head off because you've got 10 minutes till your beloved Alan Shugs is back. Alan Sugar is on the lookout for his next business partner. Now. No, it's not business Ten partner. Remain. No, it is business partner now, isn't it? 10 Remain. I, what I love is when they're doing the recap of what happened the week before is when like the voiceover person makes like puns and like references to what they were doing the week mm. before, like when they were doing the boat show in the last series, it's like the whose time in the boardroom has set sail and just that's stuff like <laughs> that. I love shit like that. It's great. Uh, anyway. Uh, right. Let's go. Have we done all the housekeeping? Should we say uh, we, have? we probably have. Yeah, at Handheld Podcast on Twitter, here it's handheld at gmail.com. If you want to do that to us, we would love to hear from you. Facebook page is a YouTube page as well. Give us a subscribe um, and get in touch with your group chats. We want to know where would you set your dream Assassin's Creed game? That's a great question. Good yeah, question. I know. I'm really, I think, and also, I'm going to say this don't just think to the past, think to the present and future. Oh, just like Call of Duty have done for the past 10 years. Interesting, interesting. Oh, anyway, going, mate. thank you for listening, everybody. Have fun abroad next week, Chris. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.